not a secret what God can do. We're not feeling blessed today for any problem. He said one time uh, she was in a, a church service and the Spirit was moving. While God was calling on others, he was, she was begging him not to pass her by. Certainly what he's done for others, he can do for you as well. Just call, cry out to his name. Let's sing that little chorus right there. Let's go to verse 25 through 33 this morning. It says, And they returned from searching the land after forty days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and shewed them the fruit of of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the, in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anna, which 
come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you this morning. Lord, I already thank you for, Lord, just the presence of you in this house. Lord, there is the, the spirit of of encouragement, I believe, already has been flowing through our worship time. And we want to thank you, Lord, because we know that it's your Spirit that encourages, O oh God. And we just thank you this morning that through the blood of Jesus, that, Lord, we're no longer at Deep Springs Baptist Church, but, Lord, we've come before the throne room of the, the Most High God, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we come to you, Lord, through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we just come to worship you in spirit and truth. And, Lord, to be uh, able to just get here is the biggest blessing of all. To have a heart to do so, Lord, we thank you for that. But, Lord, I want to pray today. Lord, let your anointing fall in this place today. Lord, let your spirit, we welcome your Holy Spirit here. The one who's to comfort us. The one who's to teach us. The one who's to lead us. Lord, we welcome him here. Because we know by your word, you said that, that we wouldn't be able to do things in our own strength or in our own might or power, but Lord, through the power of your Spirit, through the Spirit of Christ Jesus. So Lord, we welcome you here. And Lord, we ask today, show yourself. Lord, for that one here that struggled with many types of discouragements, Lord, I pray today, Break them free from the bondages that's held them back from where you want them to be. Lord, you said that whatever we bind here on earth is bound in heaven. So today, we bind the spirit of discouragement. We bind the spirit of unbelief. Lord, you said whatever's loose, we ask you to loose your people. Loose their minds today. Loose their hearts today. Loose them, O oh God, from the terrors that come by day, the terrors that come by night, so that today, Lord, they will be a witness of security in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we praise you today, and we thank you by faith, O oh God. I thank you, Lord, because I know, Lord, you didn't just get us up, to get here. You didn't just gather us together just to be here. You didn't just want us to spend some time together. You wanted to do something. You have something in mind. So thank you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen? Amen. I want to tell you this morning, this is a great story. And it's not just a story. This is history that's taking place. Moses, is, uh, as we've been studying about him, he receives the call. He goes. He goes to let God's people go from Pharaoh's bondage, from the bondage of Egypt, and really from the bondage of the things that were not of God. And here's what I want you to know. There are things in our lives that are not of God. And they, they put us in bondage, and they keep us from where God wants us to be. But he goes in there, Moses gets right in there, and God shows up, and he delivers his people, and they're on a journey. Uh, the amazing thing is I, I really hate to skip all that happened between our last looks in Exodus to where we are today. But God just moved in my heart this week. Come on, we need to see the introduction to a couple guys named Caleb and a guy named Joshua. And by the way, just to give you a little understanding about this guy named Joshua, because in the next few weeks we're going to be looking at him, he's a part of these spies. And when he comes up, his name, his, his, name is, his real name meant he was salvation. And so he was renamed. As a matter of fact, in chapter 13, when the spies are, are, are elected, he's renamed at the end of the list of the spies by Moses because, could you imagine this? You woke up before the leader, the one who's leading all of Israel. And he says, what is your name, son? He says, my name is Salvation. And Moses renames him Joshua. The salvation of the Lord. Yeshua is what we would call our Messiah, Jesus Christ. He renames Him to say He's not just salvation, but He's salvation of the Lord. And so he, in, this, in this text we found that they've been sent out and they've come back in. They've seen the land and they know what's there. And here's the thing, they get there, and as they go there, God has already told them He's made promises of what will be there. 
And I want you to know something today. Every single one of you have a promise from God of what He will be in your time of need. He is the one that provides all of the milk and honey of life. He is the one from which the streams of life flow. Matter of fact, Jesus said, out of your belly will flow living water, streams of living waters. And I'm going to tell you, the source is the Lord Jesus Christ. And He has every good and, and perfect gift for you by His promises in His Word. But you've got to realize something. If you say you serve God and you don't believe the Word of God, you are a liar. Amen. You don't believe the truth. Because in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. You'll never separate God from His Word. What He says is true. And if this is, you say you have a relationship without the Word of God, you are deceived. You must realize you've got to know that God speaks to His children and He has many promises in His Word. And His Word, listen, I wrote it down in, in 2 Corinthians 1.20, for all the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him amen unto the glory of God by us. So His Word is true. And so these guys go on an adventure to see if the Word is true. My friend, you are on an adventure in your life. And you're going to have an opportunity every single day of your life to see if the Word of God is really true. You're going to have a choice every day. You can stand listen. Every day you get up, you're going to choose one way or the other. As for Joshua, he said, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He made a choice to believe God and His Word. And you're going to have the same choices. And you know what? Don't think just because it's 2014 that some things have changed. Because even the same God that they were serving and worshiping then is the same God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for this day. Amen. Nothing's changed. And so here they are just like us. They're on an adventure. And here they go into this land and they see all this. Now in Romans 3.3 3, he would tell us that, that, that for what if some do not believe? We're getting ready to talk about where really discouragement comes from. In Romans 3.3, 3, he says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Listen, you're going to either be one of these people or you're going to encounter these type of people. These people that do not believe the Word of God always breed unbelief. They always breed discouragement. And we have to realize we're either going to be around them one day or another or we're going to be them. And we've got to realize that no, we are called to be separated. We're called to be different. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Every word He has said, we believe it to be all truth and all truth that we believe in. But if we, listen, if we're not careful, we're going to face the days where this, this discouragement comes in our life. And we may become just like those who do not believe. Don't say it can't happen to me. Because I'm going to tell you a little secret. The enemy, the devil, he is searching to and to, to whom he might deceive that he came in order to kill, to steal, and destroy. He has not changed. And he wants to destroy, listen, belief. He wants to destroy testimony. He wants to destroy everything that God says yes to. He wants it to be annulled in every one of our lives. I believe that's the tactic of today. He wants us to believe a lot. He wants us to accept some of the things that we hear and forget about what God has said about the situation. When these spies went in, all 12, when they went in, hey, they already knew the promises of God. They said, this is the land that flows with milk and honey. This is the land of promise. This is what God promised to Abraham almost 600 years before. We know that this is, this is exactly where God wants us to be. And we know that by God's Word, He'd already given it to them. But they get in there, and listen, some things happen. And this is what I got. Number, number one was, was, listen, we've got to God believe God's promises are true. We've got to start there. If you don't believe the Word of God, this, we were in our study group Sunday school this morning learning about creation. If you don't believe hey, in a God who created the universe by Genesis and the Scriptures, the way it says it was done, you've got a, you've got a problem with your belief to start from the get-go. Because we, we either take His Word for what it says, or we listen, call it a lie. There is no in-between. And my friend, this is not a buffet. You've got to, listen, believe what all it says, and you can't take and choose for your own little delights. You have to say, yes, your word is true, God. 
And that's, listen, that's what was supposed to happen. But I want to show you real quick the things where, where the birthing place of discouragement begins. That's what my number two point is, is that the birthing place of discouragement. This not only happened with these guys, it'll happen in our lives too. When listen, we know what God's Word says, but we begin to listen to other reports. Listen to this. They've already declared it was what God said because verse 27 is, they told Him and said, We came into the land whither thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Listen, there was proof. They saw with their own eyes the promises of God. But look what happens in the very next verse. The first word says in verse 28, Nevertheless. Now listen, you ever been around people who say, Yeah, I know that's what that says, but... Have you ever been one of those persons that says, I know what it says, but... That is the same thing that they said here. Nevertheless, that means that, that, means that despite all that we've seen, in other words... We've seen all of God's promises. We've seen all that He said, but this is where true discouragement begins in the believer's life. Jesus told us all the things that He came for to set us free from. But. See, we begin in our own selves to become and be the ones who discourage our own selves. Even though God shows every day His promises are true, are yea and yea and amen. But we are the ones who begin discouraging our own selves. Sure, we may not like the report. Sure, we may not like what has been said. Sure, we may not like what we see. But we have a choice in our own minds and hearts to choose what we believe in. You are not sitting under a, a God that's going to force you into anything. When you sit under the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ, you sit under the one who says, because you choose me, I will give you. Because you choose me, I will show you. Because you choose me, I will release you. And we have to realize something. We are given a choice. And don't think it doesn't happen where people become discouraged in life. Read Paul's letters. He said, "Pray for so and so, for they have turned into the ways of the Lord and the ways of the world, and rejected the truth and turned and went another way." So don't think it cannot happen. And don't ask me theologically what happens to them, because God takes care of all things. He is the master. He is the one that puts it all out there in the final days. But here's you have a choice. Don't be worried about what others do. Get, listen, get focused on what God says you can do. The amazing thing is, is, is we got to realize that our circumstances, listen, when we focus on our circumstances, we lose sight of where we're going. There's been a great many of men and women that God had called them, hey, He anointed them, but we let our circumstances many times over keep us from going to the, to the maximum potential of what God wants us to be and use us for His kingdom. It's not God that is at fault here. It's us. Because we get our eyes focused on the wrong things. Peter, he, he says that they saw the Lord coming. And this is after he just, uh, I think, fed the, the 4,000 or 5,000. Anyway, they're in a ship. And they're going to the other side. And, and listen, Jesus stayed back to pray on the mount. And it says that the disciples are in the boat and they're rowing. And they were tarrying along the way. And pretty soon they, they realized because there was a storm that was boistering, there was clouds all around them, and all of a sudden, listen, they saw Jesus coming. And the Bible says He would have passed them by, yet they had called to Him. I want to tell you something. Jesus is always there, no matter what the circumstances is. And He's waiting for you and me to call on Him. All we got to do is say, Help me, Jesus. I mean, when was the last time you just said, Help me, Jesus? When you just said, I can't do it, but I know that you can. And listen, that's what He's waiting for. Peter, he's the only one of the disciples that are in the boat. And he, I'm not preaching in that today, but this goes right along. But he's the only one in the boat that dares to step out and trust the Lord even in the midst of his circumstances. We've got to realize, hey, he's always there. And listen, he always wants to help where we are at. You don't have to think that you've got to get somewhere before Jesus will help you. 
Some of the big I'm gonna be tonight, I'm gonna start tonight on, on preaching about love because we're in the month of love. You know what I mean? You know, this is a, a, a February, you know, this Friday, you know, be the Valentine. Well, listen, I want listen, come back tonight and hear about the truths about love because you don't qualify for love. And you don't qualify for the Lord to help you. He listen, He's qualified, not me or you. He's the qualification. And it's not by where you've been or what you've done. It's by where He's been and what He's done that makes it all possible. But discouragement. These guys begin in, in verse 28, nevertheless. Oh, I know what His Word says. I've seen it with my own eyes. But that's the problem. We sit on our rear ends too much with what we know. We've got to realize something. You're going to give an account one day. Don't think that just because, hey, you may say, well, I didn't know about that. If it was preached and you heard it in your lifetime, you're accountable for it. If it was taught in your lifetime, you're accountable for it. You listen. You may say, I wasn't paying attention. I was sleeping. Well, God help your soul because you will give an account for it. Your ears will hear it, and what you do with it will be your decision of how you act or react. But we cannot let our circumstances be our excuses for why we will not believe what God says He'll do. Listen to these guys. They say, they say in verse 31, it gets down there, it says, he says, Oh, but the men that went up with him said, We are not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. Now let me ask you a question. Is there anything stronger in your life than Jesus Christ? Is there anything bigger than the God who made all of the universe, who, who set the sun, who told the waves where they could go and how far they could get there in it? Oh, tell me something. Is there something bigger than that? Should there have been anything bigger in their lives? No, but they began to believe a lie. They began to accept what they could put in front of their face, the circumstance, and they chose it than God. They went on and said, oh, and they brought up an evil report. In the last part, they said, they brought up, a, a 32 says, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they, Israel, uh, they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we had gone to search it is a land eaten up with inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And now listen to this. And they, and there we saw the giants, all the son of Anak, Anak, which come of the giants, and we were, now listen to this, in our own sight as grasshoppers. Their circumstances begin to change the vision of who they were. You know what? I want to tell you something, believer. I want to tell you something, Christian. My Bible tells me that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, He will give us power. He will actually give us life in these mortal bodies. He says that the same Spirit that raised Christ, He will rise you up with Him. Those that die with Him will rise with Him. Don't tell me there's something bigger than Jesus Christ. There's nothing bigger. And you know what? But if you begin to let the circumstances get bigger in your eyes, you will begin to feel just like these people. You will let discouragement rule in your life and you will become as a little old grasshopper. Someone, now listen, grasshoppers are, and you read over in Proverbs, they're one like the locust there. They're, they're one that, listen, doesn't have a king, but yet they fly together. So I want to tell you something. You better watch out because discouragement breeds discouragement. I can tell you right now, I can start whining and crying about something and I can find at least 20 to follow. You start whining in misery, it's amazing. Misery loves company that never done in the song one time. Yeah. That is true. But victory, victory in Jesus is usually the last thought as a result of where we're supposed to be going. And we let discouragement stop us. You know, there was a guy named Jonah. And then God told him, I want you to go to this little old town called Nineveh. It was like New York City is how big it really was. It was huge. And he said, I want you to go down to Nineveh and I want you to tell them about who I am and if they'll repent, I will save them. Nineveh in the eyes of Jonah got bigger than God. He jumped on a, a boat to Tarshish, a little old uh, uh, fisherman's cove, where he thought, oh, I'll be safe there. I want to tell you something. You can run, but you can't hide. I want to tell you, you can try to escape from all things, but you ain't really going to get away from it. You're either one day going to have to face it, or it's going to face you. You're either become victorious through Jesus Christ, or it becomes victorious by the Father of all lives. We have to realize something. 
What happened then is the same as what will happen in our lives too. And praise God to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God for all that He has done. Could you imagine? Hey, listen, the, the disciples of His day, they thought it was over. He's gone to the grave. But well, what are we going to do now? We don't know. Our Savior's gone. Our Messiah is gone. The one who was supposed to be king is gone. But praise God, on the third day, oh, something happened. He arose and He showed that He has power to overcome it all. I don't know how I could stand here and talk about that. But I will tell you this morning, hey, He still has power. He still is in control. He still is bigger than all of our problems. The next part is so amazing because we find out what really changes the whole equation. The last little piece I've got is standing firm. Verse 30, look at this guy. Oh, here's Caleb. Now Caleb, you know, let me give you a little, little key to this whole story. These are the only two that come out from all those that are in the congregation. All those that are the naysayers, they don't live enough long enough to see the glory of God. They die out. They don't make it. It's the next generation that has to go through that God allows to see the victory over the promised land. It's those that are living in discouragement that are really going to have to realize something. If we choose to stay there, we may die right where we are. But Caleb is different. I believe Caleb and Joshua, in the next chapter, Joshua is right there beside him. But I believe these are the two true descriptions of how the salvation of the Lord really comes. It is called by standing firm. In verse 30, Caleb stealed the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess. listen to the warrior. Come on, people. Listen. Let's, sure, I understand you may not be vocally uh, that sometimes. I understand sometimes you may not do things that you think and you know you should do. You may not stand up in a loud way. Then sooner or later, you're going to have to make a stand. Sooner or later, you're either going to be on this side or you're going to be on this side. You're either going to be with what He says and live it out or you're going to be on this side. Wishy-washy. Discouraged all the way and realistically living away from the truth. But He says no. He said, come on! Where are the warriors at? Come on, people! I mean, y'all ever seen Braveheart? Oh, I mean, you ever seen? He's riding down. Where are you at? Come on! Where are you? You great warriors of Christ. He says, let's go up. Let's take it. Listen, we are well able to over. He had, listen, he began to see things in light of how God's Word says and how all through the New Testament the Spirit of God seconds, thirds, and agrees with total confirmation in the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is no different. In 1 Corinthians 2, 4, it says, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Ephesians 6, 11, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore... Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the day of evil, and having done all to... Amen. Amen. Come on. Where are my warriors at? When you've done all... Stand. That's right. You've got to stand. What do you stand on? You stand... I'm standing on the solid rock of Jesus Christ, my Lord. You've got to stand on what's been tried and tested. You've got to stand on what you know, that 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 you know is obsolete, tr absolute truth. Yeah. You've got to stand. He goes on, he says, in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 3, 8, For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. If you want to live, 
If you want to see victory, you're going to have to stand on what you say you believe in. You're going to have to stand, even though the liar comes. He says, oh, you ain't going to make it through this. Oh, he says, your children ain't going to make it out of this. He says, oh, they're going to get your children. Oh, they're going to get your family. You want to know what? The lie of the devil is powerful if you believe it. I remember one day I was sitting on a scaffold in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I was laying brick, and I remember I'd just been to a, there was a men's conference. This was before Johnny Hunt started his Promise Keepers. And boy, I remember that. I remember John White. He was eating up with uh, uh, cancer, and he meant he still, he carried a hewn out logs of a cross down the center aisle, and he marched before about 15,000 men, and he carried it out because he wanted people to know that the power of Christ was greater than anything that comes against us. And I'll never forget that. Week. I remember hearing the word, and I remember, oh, it just inspired me. Oh, I remember, hey, I did something I hadn't done in a long time. I got in the word when I got home. You know what I mean? And the word started getting in me. You ever been inspired? And all of a sudden you say, oh, I'm going to get in the word. But you got to let the word get inside of you. And I remember laying brick on that scaffold. And I remember him saying, oh, don't you remember that Pharisee? He had a little girl named about, about 13 years old. And oh, she was sick as unto death. I remember that lie he told me. Because my daughter was about 12 years at the time. She was actually about 11 and a half. I was like, oh, no, Lord. I don't want that to happen to my daughter. Oh, no, Lord. I don't want to see that in my life. I don't want to see her come to the edge of death. Lord, I'd do anything. But you see, the problem is with the enemy, when he lies to you, he won't tell the rest of the truth. Because he forgot the part where Jesus walked in and told everybody else that believed the lie to get out. Because of the dead when they came back to life again. You see, he will lie to us time and time again. He lied to these people and they believed it. In their eyes, they couldn't do nothing. Whoa, little old me. I can't do nothing. I tell you something, when God is a part of the equation, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can. The enemy says you can't. But God says I want you to overcome. I want you to become. Listen to this. Jesus said this just as plain as can be in John 16, 33. He said, in this world you will have tribulation. Which one of you does that not include? In this world you will have tribulation. But take heart. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. My friend, I want you to know something. You have a choice every day. You can miss... You can believe the lies of the enemy if you want to. You can be a part of the lies of the enemy if you want to. Or you can choose to be different. You can choose to be what God called His people to be. A peculiar person. You stand out. You act different. You live different because you believe different. I want to tell you something. You have a problem trusting God? Listen. Maybe you just need to step in faith. So you can see the reality of who God really is. He wants to show Himself. The number one thing in the New Testament through, through Jesus Christ, listen, after Acts, when everything set on fire, because the Spirit of Christ Jesus, the promised one, He is, he is released into the church to begin the church. The main thing is, say, they go out to preach about the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ. We sometimes focus on the gospel. We sometimes focus about what he did there. And I'm going to tell you, it's just as important of what he did when he came out of the grave. But we've got to realize something. Our Christ didn't die on the cross. Our Christ laid his life down on the cross. Our Christ didn't die in a tomb. Our Christ allow Himself to be placed in a tomb. But our God that we serve is a living and risen God. And He has power over the living and He has power over the dead. There's nothing without reach from His almighty, powerful hand. No matter what the bad news is. No matter what the circumstances. I'm preaching to you today that Jesus Christ 
you can. If you'll trust Him with everything, He'll take you to a land filled with milk and honey. I tell you, I don't know how we could ask for anything. I don't know how we could even expect also know sometimes how could I negate who he really is. Lies and lies and lies and lies and lies. Truth. Truth. It's real. And it's life. Father, we thank you. All we give is to who you are. Father, Truthfully, only you can open a heart up to receive your word. Truthfully, you are the only one who can place it in the place of their heart where it becomes bigger than any circumstance, any of what we feel are deficiencies. And I know that sometimes your word comes and see. And it grows a little, and it grows, and it grows a little. The Lord, today, will you do what you did for Isaac? Your word says that he sowed and he reaped in the same season. Your word says that even in a time where there was famine in the land and it was a dirt, it was dry, the Lord, you gave him the ability for a seed to be put in fertile soil. And almost instantaneously, it grew up. And in the same season, we had a harvest. Lord, for your people today, Lord, I pray that those that have received the, the seed of your word, oh God, as they, will, as they will turn to you, oh Lord, and they'll cry out to you, don't pass me by, but Jesus, stay for a little while. Lord, I pray today, they'll see your harvest. I know that all things are possible with you. Lord, there may be one in here today, they suffer. They suffer from the lives of the enemy. They feel beat down. They feel depressed. They feel like they're no good for anything. But I know what your word says because, Lord, you knew them before they were ever in the, in the womb of their mother. You knew them before they were ever even began to breathe life. And Lord, your word tells me that Lord, you wonderfully and fearfully made them because Lord, every person is a recipient of your love. And Lord, I pray today through the power of Jesus Christ that that one might find victory over the lies. Lord, for the one Lord that has these, maybe even, even this past week or maybe next week, the telephone will come in or from the doctor's visit, the news will come in. Lord, I pray this day. Lord, let them set it in their heart this day. And Lord, they will believe the Word of God and they'll call the man, the Word of man, alive. And they'll believe You, O oh God. Because I know You'll carry them through whatever it is that they have to face. But Lord, help us also to remember that what we learn today, You want to use us later for, for Your glory and for the sake of the kingdom. For nothing is small. Nothing is my name. Praise God, nothing's too big for who you are. Lord, I make my prayer today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the resurrected one who will raise us up to him. And I thank you for that. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. As you stand with me today, and Brother Ronnie, I know you've got us a hymn of invitation. I want to encourage you. I love that. Hey, I love that chorus, Victory in Jesus. If you need victory today, I pray, listen, you just submit to it. You need victory today, you call on this name. You need victory today, hey, you just do what he presses in your heart. And I promise you, he'll show up and he'll carry you through. Amen? Yeah. Let's get ready to sing.